Hey there, welcome back to Runet. So I want to just uh, quickly talk about the uh, newest release of Intern for your uh, JavaScript testing. So Intern just released, I think it was like last week, the uh, 4.0 final version for Intern. Now if you're not familiar with Intern, it's uh, been, around, been around for a while. It's a great little uh, tool to be able to do your uh, JavaScript testing with. I say little, little is probably not a good word. I mean, it has a lot of different functionality. It's always been able to do things like code coverage, uh, regular uh, type-driven develop, uh, sorry, test-driven development or uh, behavior-driven development uh, type of testing. Um, it's got all kinds of hooks for doing continuous integration. Uh, you can do stuff with Sauce Labs, Browser Stack, and it's all just built in directly into Intern itself. So with Intern 4, uh, a lot of work has been done so that you can more easily use it to do testing of your TypeScript code. Um, you can uh, do more, more testing of uh, your code inside of Node. Uh, you can do it in the browser. It's got funct functional testing. Uh, it's got, still has continuous integration stuff. And some of the um, configuration has been simplified quite a bit. And it's also got, uh, I think, simplified code coverage reporting. So before, and I think I've done uh, this video before, when I wanted to get code coverage from a TypeScript code, uh, by default, intern did the code coverage of the JavaScript code, but I had to do some tweaking to get uh, remap Istanbul to uh, use the map, map files that are generated with my JavaScript code from my TypeScript to look up the TypeScript source and give me code coverage of my TypeScript code. It was quite a few steps I had to do to get that working. It's not a big deal. It's just a little configuration, but now that's just built in. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, the docs got a facelift, so the docs uh, are are much cleaner now, I think, and they have this nice little uh, uh, sidebar table of contents here. Just how to get the stuff. Uh, just install, install intern at next, and you'll get the latest version. Um, things are not done inside of a uh, intern JS file anymore that you have to point to any, uh, at this point. It's just an intern.json. So. Let me quickly go over this to show you what I got here. So um, before I used to have to download intern CLI and uh, intern to get things done, but that's all kind of built in now. I do still kind of do some funny stuff for my uh, uh, intern testing, and that's only because I'm using Webpack, and, and the way I'm doing my, my Webpack builds and stuff and not finalized yet, so I can't get my intern to uh, really um, test the built file that Webpack gives me and do everything correctly that I need to do. So at this point, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, building the TypeScript source and then testing that. So I just got a little script here that's going to create me a temp directory, delete that temp directory, uh, compile my TypeScript, uh, run intern, which you only have to run the intern command. That's it, nothing special. And then I delete my test directory and I'm done. All right, so, okay, so let's take a look at my setup here. So I have an intern.json here, and this intern.json is going to use a Dojo 2 loader. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm saying here. And then I am testing the ArcGIS API for JavaScript stuff. I'm doing an app for that. And what I'm going to do here is just give it the uh, packages and locations here. So I just need to tell it where they're going to be located. In this case, I'm just pointing it to the CDN to look for everything. Uh, simply enough there. Uh, I've got stuff locally for Chai, sit on testable um, and material. I'm using some material stuff as well. And then what's cool here is that for the environment, I'm just going to tell it I want to test on Chrome locally. So uh, when I do my local testing, I am not setting it up to do, um, no, I'm not doing any continuous integration at this point. It's just me to locally test. So I want to test it in Chrome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it some Chrome options to do uh, headless Chrome. And uh, I forget what this fixed session capabilities is. I forgot. I found it somewhere. And anyway, I just pointed it to my browser suites, and I'm going to go ahead and tell that one to use this all.js, and I'll show you that in a second. And then uh, my coverage here, I, I want to ignore uh, node modules, and I want to run coverage on the output of my TypeScript compiler here. And then max concurrency too. Uh, I forget here. I think this is just uh, you know, how many tests are going to try and run at the same time kind of thing. So all right, let's get into uh, look at some tests. So basically... I've got my all TS here, and it's just TypeScript. I'm bringing in uh, a couple of tests I've got already written. I've got uh, this test here. So this one's kind of interesting here. So I'm basically just bringing in some stuff here. And, and the way that you would do it with TypeScript to bring intern in, because intern's actually 
uh, loaded as a global in the environment when you are running it. But for TypeScript stuff, I need to do it like this. So just import an object from intern, and that makes my types, TypeScript uh, happy. All right, so uh, I'm bringing in test double. I'm bringing some Synon stuff. And I don't even think I'm using test double for this particular test. Uh, bring in some API stuff. And I've got my app stuff here. So I've got a store, and I have a, a main file where I've got a, a function empty. And this is the, uh, I built this function just to empty DOM elements uh, as needed when my app is starting up. And I've got a start uh, function that's going to actually kick off my entire application. So they've simplified the way the tests are written at this point. I mean, it used to be called register suite. Now it's just suite. I think there's still register suite, but I forget. I don't know. I just like this simple, being able to just write suite give it a name and then I write my test method here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give it a description of what my test is. This is much more like what you see a lot of other uh, testing frameworks uh, do when you write your test, right? So, okay, so I'm doing here and I'm just going to create an element and I'm going to add stuff to it and I'm going to empty it and I want to make sure that the inner HTML of the element is now empty. You know, em it's pretty straightforward what this is doing. And then I have another little test here, testing to see when I start my app. I'm going to call a method on the store called load widgets, and that's going to return a promise that's already resolved. And I just want to make sure that that uh, stub that I created using Synon was actually just called one time. That's it. No big deal. So let's go ahead and run my little uh, npm run intern here. So my little test script. So I'm going to let that run. Uh, you can see that uh, it's just going to go ahead and it's deleting a directory, copying some stuff. Now it's starting the local server on localhost 9000 uh, with the Chrome um, uh, Selenium stuff here, right? And if you didn't, if the first time you do this, it's going to go ahead and download the Chrome driver so it can run this. And it's going to go ahead and uh, get that set up for you. So, okay, there we go. So you notice I did not have my Chrome pop up and start running all my tests for me. That would be the default if I did not set up the Chrome headless browser. Uh, but I did, so it didn't pop up and do all that stuff. It just ran headlessly for me. So, okay, hold on here. I'm using Tmux. I got to kind of play around with how I scroll here. Okay, so what did we do? So we started the uh, tunnel, right? So that's Chrome driver there. And it's just listing out all the tests that it ran. Easily enough, right? Pretty quick. And everything passed. So I got green check marks here, no failures. That's awesome. But the other great useful tool here is the ability to see how much coverage I have in my application, right? So I could see here that I've got about 52% coverage of statements in my application, which isn't all that great. I've got to do some work here to write some more tests and get some things going. For my main file, I've only got 69% coverage, and I'm only covering 50% of the branches. Uh, that basically means I've got some if else statements in there, and I'm not covering some stuff. So I got to go ahead and I have to make sure I write more tests for that. I'm doing great on this uh, source TS here. And this is just where I've got some uh, um, like external third party kind of APIs I'm calling some stuff. So I've tested pretty much everything there. Uh, I'm comfortable with 90%. I'm pretty much comfortable if I hit like 80, 85% um, when it comes to branches because uh, it's a little tricky sometimes to test uh, some uh, conditional branches here and there. But I think 80, 85 is pretty good. That's kind of where I'm comfortable at. Your team might have different standards on what your code coverage needs to meet. And again, if you can't meet that, then, uh, you know, typical rule of thumb is that if you can't test it, then that means you probably need to refactor it, right? So that a, a, gives me a good idea of things I need to work on in my code. So my app here, I'm pretty poor. I've got 45%. And then this code here, I didn't even run the, uh, I don't even have tests yet for some of my widgets I'm writing. I'm only down to like, I've got 28% coverage here and 45% coverage here. And the reason it's 45% is it's just, it's just a incidental coverage using my other tests that I wrote that maybe import this and then do something with it. Uh, that's kind of considered coverage, but not really full coverage. Um, and then I've got some localization files here that, you know, it tested them, but I mean, yeah, that's, again, that's not really tested. So again, I did one platform, eight of them passed, zero failed. Uh, when I'm setting up my intern here, uh, if I go back to my intern.json, where do we go? Okay. I could uh, set up different other browsers here to load as well. So I could tell it to uh, test Firefox, test Safari since I'm on a Mac. Um, and it'll go ahead and open those browsers and run those tests locally for me. And I'm all good to go. Uh, however, you're probably going to want to 
um, run continuous integration stuff if you're going to be testing on more than one browser. So it's got some instructions here for uh, setting stuff up with uh, Jenkins. We've got Travis CI instructions. Uh, Team City. I've never used Team City. I've used Jenkins and Travis CI. So I'm going to assume that uh, you know some of you guys out there are using this stuff. Uh, Code Ship and Bamboo. Right. So uh, this is all kind of really cool stuff you can do. Uh, there's lots of really cool doc in here. Uh, they have a whole API doc on how to, how you do stuff. So I highly recommend you check some of this stuff out. Give Intern a spin. Like I said, it's got pretty much everything you want from a testing framework just kind of built right into it. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I still, on a regular basis, and I don't know, maybe it's just me when I write my tests, struggle with the idea of like mocking stuff. So like I send on a test double, um, and it's simple enough, but uh, one of the things I guess I think I mentioned this before, I got I really liked when I used Jest for testing was the way that it handles its mocks. Where I just create a folder where it's like underscore underscore mock underscore underscore and wherever I need it, and it's going to catch that stuff. But again, the the downside to that is I actually have to write uh, more code to do mocking than I would to just use Synon or Test Double to do the mock. So it's kind of a you know give and take, but this works out really well. I'm real happy with Intern 4 right now. Uh, it's kind of simplifying my workflow for stuff and uh, encourages me to write more tests, which I definitely need to do. Uh, sorry, so give it a shot. Thanks.